everybody. I wanted to do a video for you today talking a little bit more about the puppies um, and the process of kind of how we ended up with puppies and everything like that um, and kind of what the plans are for the puppies. Um, so the puppies are obviously livestock guardian dogs, Great Pyrenees, Anatolian Shepherd mixed. Um, their mom is 75% Great Pyrenees, quarter Anatolian. Their dad is um, half Anatolian and half, I believe like American shepherd. So they're obviously like the puppies are like a quarter American shepherd as well too. Um, but livestock guardian dogs all the way around. Um, so in June of last year, uh, I was actually having a moment where I was really kind of, we had moved to the property. We were just had gotten the camper up to the spot it's at now. And uh, I was pretty overwhelmed with everything that still needed to be done. And there's still a lot of that stuff that still needs to be done now. <laughs> it takes time. And uh, so I was having a moment, basically a night, where I was super overwhelmed and wasn't sure how it was all going to get done. And uh, I was honestly up late crying. And um, at about 2.30 in the morning... I hear our dogs, um, we had four dogs at the time, going off like crazy. And I think, oh my gosh, there's like a coyote or something like that. They're getting in a fight. So my husband and I go outside. Um, you know, my husband has his gun and everything else because, you know, if there's a coyote trying to kill our dogs, that coyote's going to be dead. <laughs> um, you know, that kind of deal. And we end up coming out and in a brush pile that's about 50 feet from our camper, uh, my husband goes, it's a puppy. And I'm like, what? I mean, guys, it's 2.30 in the morning. Uh, we live on 40 acres, and that's like the smallest piece of property in our area. Um, there's like no one with less than 40 acres. There's 40 acres to 120, 130-ish acres. Like there's, you know, it's big property out here. Um, it's out far out. It's not near a town really or anything like that. So it's not like the puppy got dumped on our front yard. We're also halfway back in our property. So we're 20 acres in. Um, and this is a little puppy. Like we ended up realizing it was an eight week old puppy and that's how we got Ezra. Uh, Ezra showed up this super sweet, fluffy little dude. Um, he comes walking out of the brush pile, comes walking straight towards me. Like he knew me, like I was his mommy and that ended all my cares and worries <laughs> because I had this super sweet, adorable little puppy that needed me to take care of him. Um, he was skinny. Uh, I mean, he, he looked fine cause he was super fluffy, but I could tell he was skinny that he needed food. I wasn't sure how long he'd been out in the woods. Um, and so it was one of those things where, um, God sent me a puppy when I was freaking out. And now Ezra is a little over a year old and now he has puppies of his own. So these puppies are his babies. Um, we ended up getting a female great Pyrenees, um, shortly after the loss of us, a couple of our dogs, uh, unfortunately, um, we unfortunately lost some dogs. Um, and, uh, we ended up getting Esther and, uh, so we bought Esther with the intention to breed her with Ezra. And, uh, because now, right, right now we only have Samson because his brother Titus got out and ran away. Um, we only have Samson, Esther, and Ezra. And so Samson is eight years old. And so for a great Pyrenees that's getting older, like he's still perfectly capable of doing things. But looking at him, you can tell he's moving slower. He's walking slower. He's not as active as he used to be and everything like that. He's getting old. He needs to be retired. Um, so we wanted to be able to have more dogs, basically, to help protect our flock. Um, Esther, she's fantastic. She's so good. She's so obedient. She's excellent with animals. Um, all, all animals like ducks, chickens, sheep, like she's fantastic. And Samson's fantastic too. Ezra, he's still a little like excited about like the ducks and stuff, but he doesn't ever hurt them. He just gets excited over them. And so we're working with him on that. <laughs> we're training him. You still have to train your livestock guardian dogs. They have an innate sense to protect, but you still have to work with them. Um, so we now have puppies, five puppies from Ezra and Esther. And so, um, obviously we do not keep, we're not keeping all five. We're keeping more than I thought we would. Um, so I honestly didn't really think we were going to keep any of them. Um, but given the fact that Samson is so old, 
um, and we should be retiring him. Um, I we realized that we do definitely need to keep one. Um, now we do have another couple that's living here on property with us, and they'll be here pretty much permanently. Um, and so they're keeping one of the puppies as their own. We are keeping one of the puppies as our own, and we're keeping the brothers. Uh, Samson and Titus were brothers, and they have ser had served us excellently until Titus got out when we moved here to Oklahoma. And so um, we would like to have that brother dynamic again. And then one of the other, one of the females actually, she basically has bonded to my oldest daughter and not in the sense of like my oldest daughter holds her all the time and loves her and you know, stuff like that. No, this puppy, like from the get go, once the puppy could walk, she would just walk to my oldest daughter and like sit in her lap and hang out with her and, and everything else. Like she would just, she picked my daughter and, um, and it's funny because that puppy looks actually the most like her father, Ezra. And, um, so basically we're probably going to end up keeping her too. <laughs> so we're going to keep three out of the five puppies, two of which will be ours and one will be the other couples. Um, however, they're all going to work together as, as a unit anyways, to protect our animals, regardless of whose dog they are. And then the other two dogs uh, already have homes, um, lined up for them that they will be going to protect other people's livestock basically. And we will be training the puppies. We're going to be training them with our sheep and with our ducks and everything like that so that they are um, trained or ready to livestock when they go to their new houses um, or new homes. Um, but right now they're still tiny. They're four weeks old. So <laughs> they still sleep a lot and just are tiny, cute, adorable little fluffy puppies. Um, and so this is kind of how we ended up with... Um, this many dogs right now. <laughs> um, and it's one of those things we don't have intentions of breeding Ezra and Esther again. Um, this was a one-time thing. This is basically like Ezra is a really, really good dog and Esther, like he's a really good dog just naturally. Um, and so is Esther. Both are very easy to train. Both are very obedient. They want to please you, which is what you want in a dog. But at the same time, both are absolutely willing to protect the property and to bark when they need to and not bark when they don't need to and, and things like that. And so they're both really good dogs that have really great qualities. And it was one of those things where with Ezra, I wanted to have at least, I wanted him to be a dad at least once because he was such a good or is such a good dog that I knew those traits, like, you know, God basically gave us this dog <laughs> And I wanted to be able to share that, basically that blessing with others. And, uh, so, and then Esther's such a good dog. Like it's when you have dogs like that, now, obviously you don't want a puppy mill or anything like that. That's why we're not breeding them anymore. Um, it's also a lot of work to have puppies and, um, there's a lot of other things that we need to do on the homestead other than just raising puppies. And, um, so it's one of those things that, um, they're good dogs with really good traits that will make excellent dogs for other people as well, too. And so they have their babies now and, um, uh, we're going to get Ezra fixed and we'll leave Esther unfixed for now. And, um, none of our, all our other dogs will be fixed. So she's not getting pregnant by any dogs anytime soon. And, uh, what's going to happen basically with the puppies is because our property is 40 acres total. There's going to be a section where our houses are, and there's going to be a section with the animals. Um, now eventually the animals will be run up, not around the house, but near the houses as well too. But there's some work that has to be done on that part of the property first before we can be running animals through them. So basically the plan right now for the animal, for the dogs is, um, Esther, and the female puppy that's basically adopted my oldest daughter, <laughs> they're going to go in with a sheep. That's going to be literally be their job. They will be the sheep dogs. Um, it's better when you have a female in there with the sheep because males are more intimidating to coyotes and things like that. Um, the other female will be fixed as well. Um, and, uh, it's one of those things where, a lot of times with females, it's better to have more than one because they are females by nature with dogs, even like with people, females by nature are going to be smaller. So 
having more than one is a little bit more of a deterrent than just having one. Now, they're going to be in with the sheep, so they'll be in there to take care of them, to guard them, to protect them, and things like that. They'll move with them from paddock to paddock and everything else. Um, and what's basically going to happen with the two male puppies that we have right now, um, their names are North Star and Tank. Tank is a little tank. Like, he's got big old paws already and everything else. <laughs> um, North Star and Tank are basically going to take over the job that Samson and Titus used to have. Samson and Titus were our patrol dogs. They would patrol the property, the 20 acres that's pasture right now, and they would make sure that there was no predators and everything like that. And then they would be out there to, you know, protect. Basically, they're the first line of defense. So you have North Star and Tank, which they're both like basically all black. So at night, it's going to be like super intimidating. <laughs> Not even going to lie, I'm a little excited about that because Ezra's super intimidating at night because he's super quiet. So all of a sudden, like, you'll be walking around and then all of a sudden there's a dog there and like, you can't see him. Like, he knows it's me. So I don't like, he doesn't bark or anything, but like all of a sudden you can't see. And even at night when he is barking, you can't see him. <laughs> you got to like, listen really well to figure out where he's coming from. So it's kind of cool. But basically the first line of defense against like coyotes or any other kind of predators that would try to go after our sheep or chickens um, or ducks would be tank and North star. Obviously they're not at that age yet. So Ezra and Samson will basically be kind of still having those roles until Tank and North Star are big enough and old enough. So basically a year old. So about a year from now. And so Tank and North Star will be patrol for the 20 acres that have the livestock in it. And then Esther and um, I guess her name will be Honey. My daughters picked that name out. Esther and Honey will actually be in the paddock with the sheep doing like immediate protection kind of stuff. Eventually, Samson and Ezra, because <clears throat> Ezra is like my baby, <laughs> um, and because he has naturally taken over the role as our protector, like if I walk anywhere, he walks with me. If my daughters walk anywhere, he walks with them. If one of my daughters breaks off from the group, he'll go with the one that breaks off from the group. He literally like herds little children away from our ponds on our property when people come to visit, like literally herds them away from the ponds and brings them back to their parents. Not that their parents aren't paying attention. Their parents are absolutely paying attention, but he's still making sure that he's a barrier between the kid and the pond. Like, and I've never trained him to do that. Also, like when people come and visit, if he like senses someone's like weaker, <laughs> he will stick right by that person. And make sure they're okay. Like this is his natural instinct is to protect people. And so because his natural instinct is more to protect people versus protect animals, like Esther's natural instinct is to protect the animals. Samson's natural instinct is to protect the animals. They love us. They respect us. We take care of them. But at the same time, their job is with the animals and they know it. Ezra's job has been more become taking care of us and making sure we're safe which I'm fine with. We live out in the middle of nowhere. Like it's not a bad thing to have a personal protection dog. Um, especially when that's big and black and intimidating. <laughs> but, um, so basically what's going to happen then once we get like our house built and everything else is Ezra and Samson, Samson will then become retired because by that point tank and, um, North star will be big enough. Tank and North star will take over patrol duty. Samson can retire and just relax his old Pyrene self all day long if he wants to, um, up by our house and everything else and just chill. And Ezra will be up around the house area too for personal protection and to be like, Ezra will still come down in the field with the livestock and everything like that. If we're down this part of the field, he'll be down here with us. Same with Samson. But their job, Samson's job will become to retire and just relax and enjoy the rest of his life. Um, he's worked hard for us. He's been a fantastic dog. I literally could not have asked for a better, him and his brother both, for better first experiences with livestock guardian dogs. That's why we love livestock guardian dogs so much and believe in them so much for a homestead. Um, and then, like I said, we'll have our, like, basically a personal protection dog. So we'll have our retired dog, our personal protection dog up by the house. In the pasture, we'll have our two patrol dogs, and then in with the actual livestock, we will have um, two more dogs. And so a lot of times when you do have a homestead, it's good to run multiple lines of defense. Um, a lot of times what people will do is they'll actually put Anatolian shepherds on perimeter patrol. 
um, because Anatolian Shepherds are more of kind of like attack dogs versus um, intimidation dogs. And Pyrenees are more intimidation type dogs. Now, Pyrenees can absolutely handle themselves and like kill, you know, coyotes or whatever and stuff like that. But um, a lot of times what people do is they'll put Pyrenees in with the, um, in with the, uh, the livestock. And sorry, my kids just came in the camper. <laughs> um, a lot of times what people do is put Pyrenees in with, a, with, in with the livestock because they're super tame and super gentle and super mild mannered. And then they'll put the Anatolian Shepherds who are a little bit more high strung and a little bit more um, apt to actually fight like a predator um, on the perimeter. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. Um, now, granted, the puppies are part Great Pyrenees and part Anatolian Shepherd and everything else. So they're a bit of a mix. But still, we're putting the boys on the outside, basically, as the first line of defense and then the females on the inside. Um, I don't expect it to ever have to get that far. We, I mean, I pray it doesn't ever get that far. Um, we've had sheep now for, since 2000 and gosh, 14, 2014. And, uh, we have yet to ever lose a sheep, you know, <laughs> we've yet to ever lose a sheep to a predator. And we've lived in plenty of areas that have had coyotes. I hear coyotes out here all the time. We also have electric fencing and everything else. There's a lot of things that go into, like, we have multiple upon multiple layers of protection for our animals. Um, so it makes us a lot less of a target than say somebody who just has like sheep out in a field with no protection whatsoever. Um, so these are kind of things to think about. Um, this is kind of why we have dogs and why we have so many. Um, now we do not plan on getting any more dogs <laughs> after this. Like this is plenty of dogs. We also plan on building, ramping up our rabbit production, um, so that we can feed our dogs rabbits, um, and stuff like that. Cause rabbit is actually the best food you can feed your dog. Um, so we plan on ramping that, ramping that up so they're not getting like just a bunch of, you know, regular dog food that they're actually getting something a lot healthier for them as well so that they're getting really good nutrition too. Um, but this is kind of like basically our, our guidelines and how we've grown basically as, um, as homesteaders, shepherds of our flock. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know really how you want to put it. But uh, this is kind of how we've grown in the sense of dogs and the kind of dogs we've run. Like I said, we don't plan on getting any more. Um, like I said, Samson's old. Um, I don't. We don't plan on getting any, any another dog to replace him. Um, that's why we have the puppies, in all honesty, and um, and Esther. And so, um, this is what we will have for a while. <laughs> Um, unless y'all decides to drop off another dog on our property and is like, here, here's another puppy for you to take care of. Unless it's something like that, who knows? Um, but this is kind of the, basically the way we're going to be running our homestead, um, and our property here on out for a while is having the, per like I said, personal protection dog and retired dog up by the house. We have our patrol dogs and then we have our immediate protection dogs. And, um, hopefully that all pans out and works out well. Um, the puppies, we will be starting to train them probably in about the next two weeks or so. Um, once they get a little bit bigger, um, Ezra was eight weeks old when he showed up here and we started training him basically at that point around the sheep and everything like that. Um, because we needed to make sure if we were keeping him that he was going to be good with the animals. And so we have ducks now as well. We're going to be getting chickens here soon. Um, so these puppies have got to learn, like, you can't be killing these things. <laughs> and we also, lambing season, we're going into lambing season. We have one lamb born recently and we're going to have more. Like they need to learn that lambs are not toys. You know, they're things you protect and that's what they'll be learning through Samson and Esther as well. So they'll be going through training so that they're well-trained and, you know, take care of the flock. So if you guys do have any questions about running livestock guardian dogs or anything like that, uh, feel free to give me a call. Uh, or not call, <laughs> feel free to comment below, uh, not giving out my number. Um, feel free to comment below and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. All right. Hope you all have a great day. Bye.